All right, let's do it. Let's talk about a Mustang. We have to revisit the Ford Mustang Mach-E. And I wanted to do this for a couple reasons, actually. One is it turns out, I mean, I, I played with it off camera a long time ago as it was first being released, but since then it's become one of the most popular, most well-liked and probably most solid EVs of the past couple years that you can buy. I see them on the road all the time. And actually since then, it's about to get, or it has gotten, depending on when you watch this, two major updates, one hardware and one software. They're really interesting. So let's get into it. I wanna just talk about why I think this has done so well and then those updates. So first of all, in this video, what you're not gonna hear me do is talk again about the Mustang name. It's a Mustang, okay? That's, it's just a part of it. I'm not gonna to talk too much about it, but there are a bunch of reasons why I think it's it's pretty clear in hindsight why this thing has been so successful and so popular. Probably just starting with the shape, the form factor. We all know this is what America loves is an SUV like this, or a crossover if you want to call it that. But then second of all, it's really nailed a lot of the EV fundamentals. And for a lot of people getting their first EV, which this is their first, uh, it's got to nail the fundamentals and it does that. It's got a 70 kilowatt hour battery. This spec is landing people. Depends on your trim and your wheel size, but anywhere from 250 to at the top trim gets like 300 miles on a charge. So that's really solid. It has a front trunk. It has good storage space and it's that crossover that's kind of destined to be popular in America. Let me show you the trunk. Well, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it. Oh, I've done this before. If I open the trunk, but I'm standing too close to it, the sensors think that I'm in the way and it doesn't open. So I got to stand back a little bit then open the trunk and it opens and you get a good amount of storage space there's a second row back here obviously but they really thought about it there's your charging equipment wall charger but then pop this down put your groceries in solid high floor this is a good amount of storage space this is the stuff you, you look for in a, a fundamentally sound car it's built by ford everything is well built nothing really rattles or shakes the material choices are good it's solid. So let me talk about the first update, the first thing which is a hardware update, and that is with charging. So if you get a Mustang Mach-E today, these have what's called the CCS charger, and they max out at, obviously the range is really solid, but they do top out at, I think it's 115 or 120 kilowatts of charging speed, which in today's world of EVs that charge at 200, 250, 300, 350 kilowatts, it's not that fast. But the major update coming to the Mach-E is that, well, all of Ford's EVs, starting in 2025, as we talked about in the last video, are adopting Tesla's NACS port. So Tesla's port, that's going to enable them, hopefully, to charge much faster, but they'll be able to charge on all of Tesla superchargers. Public chargers are also getting better, too. I was really happy to hear the sponsor of this video, Flow, is focusing on offering over 98% network uptime, and they have a free app on iOS and Android that lets you check the status of over 70,000 public chargers across North America, thanks to interoperability with various charging networks. So here in New York City, Flow has over 100 of these curbside charging stations that they make, and people seem to really love them. And they're keeping track of things like the roughly 30% utilization rate, and some of them with over a 99.9% .9 uptime. Also, Flow makes a residential product too, the Flow Home, which shares the same ruggedness and reliability as the public charging stations. So feel free to download the Flow app. Thanks again to Flow for sponsoring. So I look forward to a charging update on the Mach-E starting in 2025, and that's a big deal for this vehicle. All the ones that are sold between now and then, I believe you just get an adapter, and that's still gonna be able to charge pretty fast, but that's something to keep an eye on with software, but then let me get inside and show you something different with the, uh, sorry, that's that's hardware. Now let's do software. You may also remember that this has come from the sort of era of early EVs where like you have to do something weird or different with the door. It's always lights and door. This one, they have uh, no real traditional door handle. You, you have the key in your pocket and you just press this button right here. It unlocks and then you can pop it out like this and you sort of just pull it by that tab. Then we can get into the Mach-E. So really on the inside, nothing's changed too dramatically. Not gonna talk about it. Uh, but I will point out a few things. Now that I've been living it again with a few weeks, I've sort of been reminded of some things. First of all, again, is Ford's build quality. Like this screen in the middle is just rock solid on here. You still have this volume knob and the software actually lets you change. 
copyrighted music, lets you change what it controls based on context. So if I uh, turn on the HVAC here, now this wheel controls temperature, which is pretty cool. If I turn that off, if I turn that off, now suddenly this is going to go away and it's going to become my volume control again. So it's context sensitive, which is cool. I also really like the placement of these wireless chargers. They kind of tilt towards you a little bit, although this does have wireless Android Auto and CarPlay, so you don't need to be on those ports, but you have them if you want them. And this little bit of storage down here, this door, very well made. Just everything is solid. The seats are comfortable. It's got a little bit of carbon fiber trim up here as well. Real air vents. Pretty nice combo of real buttons versus touchscreen. All this stuff is still what you expect from the Mach-E. You sit pretty high off the ground still, people love that. You've also got this expansive, gigantic sunroof. It's the shape and it's the things that are pretty standard in a lot of EVs now, but again, when this was early in EVs and this came out, this sort of set the tone for what to expect from a traditional car manufacturer making electric cars. Again, it's got a frunk, it's got, it's got everything going for it. A lot of extra space in the middle. Well done by Ford. And now I gotta talk about the software update. So this is one of the few cars that we've started to see come out that actually gets over the air software updates. And what I've been driving is a Mach-E with actually the brand new latest about to be released. So I guess I'm technically beta testing this, but the about to be released version of Blue Cruise 1.3. So every car out now, if they've got the latest software, is 1.2. This is the latest version, which does have some actually pretty interesting new features. But Blue Cruise is their adaptive sort of self-drive, I'd say not self-driving, it's their level two highway cruise uh, driving assist feature. And this has the latest version of it. So here's what I'll say. Every one of these companies has to sort of mitigate risk and decide how much they want their system to be able to do. Uh, Tesla being on the far end of like, we want your car to be able to drive itself from point A to point B. And Blue Cruise is much closer to the other end. It's much better than it was before, but this, it literally only works on highways, certain highways, and certain parts of certain highways. Uh, but what it does when it's on those parts of certain highways is really, really smooth. So it does this new thing that I found was really interesting. Uh, obviously, if you're in the lane, it'll hold its lane, it'll drive just like a normal car on the highway, it'll keep its distance from the car in front of you, all that good stuff. And if you put the blinker on, it'll check your shoulder, and if there's enough space, it'll move over. If there's nothing in the lane, it'll, it'll move over and you put the blinker off and you're good. So that works as intended. What I found really interesting though, is they've been trying to make it more smooth and more natural. And because they have all this data now from these cars being out for a while and people using Blue Cruise, they figured out when people are most likely to disengage this software. And one of the most common times that people disengaged it was when they were passing or being passed by a large vehicle like a truck because they felt like a little too close to it and they would disengage it and sort of move over a little bit to give it a little more space, just because it may be a little twitchy and you don't really feel super comfortable being that close to a truck. So what this does, now that they know that it does that, is it tries to act a little more natural like a human and anytime you are passing a truck or about to be passed by a truck, something like a large vehicle is next to you, it moves over a little bit within the lane. So it's smart enough to know whether it's in the center, the left side, or the right side of the lane. And so I had noticed if a truck was on the right side of me, this whole car would move over a little bit to the left side of the lane to give the truck a little more space. And it sounds like such a small thing, but that little natural engagement, and even a little bit of a, a, little bit of a graphic on the screen itself showing that it's doing that, made a really big difference, and I was far less likely to disengage it. This is honestly some of the smoothest highway driving from any system I've ever tried which is super cool. Uh, and that's been basically the major improvement with Blue Cruise 1.3. Other things are like it works in more difficult situations, more poorly lined roads, nighttime driving, some of the weird rainy, stormy driving we've had over the past couple of days, it does much better and is less likely to disengage in those situations. But yeah, generally, really good stuff. I hate how many cars make me hit the button to turn it off. Uh, I'm gonna open the front trunk real quick. But yeah, I think that's generally been my uh, consensus with this car is it feels like a lot of what has to be true about the best-selling EVs is they have to be 
pretty boring. And I don't even mean that as an insult, I just mean people are most comfortable when a new car is familiar to an old car. This is one of the few rare front trunks in a traditional car manufacturer's EV. You could fit like two duffel bags in there, or a carry-on bag, or a roller bag in an airport. Uh, but the point is like when you get people buying new cars and they act a lot like their old car people feel the most comfortable and i think that's a lot of what ford's done here and that's a lot of what you'll see with these manufacturers who have made tons of other cars and i think they did a really good job with the mustang mach e let me know what you think are you looking for a big update on the must on the on the mustang mach e or are you looking at some other evs because i kind of think they did a great job with this one either way thanks for watching catch you later peace